Hey everybody, Thomas here. So today is November November 14th, 2021, and it is probably 46 degrees outside, a little bit of a wind. So you're asking yourself, Thomas, maybe you're asking me that, what the heck are you doing in the apiary today when it's so cold? Let me tell you. So what I'm doing is trying to stay ahead of the game. Uh, in beekeeping, you kind of have to be one season ahead of where you are. So this is winter, coming into winter anyway. So I'm trying to prepare my colonies for spring. So what we're doing today is an oxalic acid treatment to knock out the mites. Now, the temperature is below 50, which means the girls are not out flying. Everybody should be in the colonies right now. And there's been some studies done that have said if you do a larger dose of oxalic acid once, it's actually more impactful than the you know four or five doses over you know 28 day rotation of uh, you know the whatever it is one gram per brood box. So what I'm going to do today is a full teaspoon, which is around four grams of oxalic acid per colony. Um, I'm choosing this colder weather because all the bees are inside. Uh, the queen has slowed down laying. There should be almost no brood, if any brood whatsoever. So we don't have any closed cells. Uh, the oxalic acid, as you may or may not know, does not enter into the, any capped cells. Uh, and that's where the mites are when they reproduce. They reproduce inside the cells. So what we're trying to do is any mites that are in these colonies, especially our poor little pink colony over here that was overrun with mites, None of them should be in any cap cells. They should all be on the backs of the bees. And so this oxalic acid treatment should knock that out. Uh, I don't know that I'm, I think I'm gonna film doing this, but I'll probably like super high speed it so you can see me running around like a maniac. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's what I'm doing today. Just a little oxalic acid treatment to try to stay ahead of the game with the bees and hopefully we'll have some survivors coming out of, uh, out of winter and uh, we can move on from there. So stay tuned. All right, so what I've done is I've just gone around and I've plugged all the entrances uh, to all the colonies and I've got uh, my vaporizer warming up and I've got my uh, breathing mask and we're gonna get started. So this is important safety gear. You do not wanna breathe in oxalic acid vapor. And I have some gloves because the vaporizer is hot. So the first one went pretty quick. Second one is still uh, vaporizing. The green light is still on on the vaporizer. It looks like it just went off, so let's check it. So I drilled a hole in the backs of these colonies so I can put the vaporizer through. But I notice on this blue one here, there's a little bit that's uh, vapor coming out so uh, maybe next year I'll buy some or I'll make some plugs to plug those holes so the bees don't fill it with propolis and then when I go to do this I take the vaporizer out and I can plug it keep all the uh, vaporization inside This is definitely one of those beekeeping jobs that's quick and easy and so worthwhile doing. Like seriously, simple to do. Costs a little bit of money to buy the vaporizer and stuff, but that's just a one-time cost. And the oxalic acid lasts a long time, and that's fairly cheap. So I feel like as a beekeeper you have no excuse to not do this kind of mite treatment. That's just my opinion though. But for what it's worth, I'm only a second year beekeeper. The hell do I know? All 
Another thing you might notice is that, uh, so I've got two extra cups. I have a total of three cups. So I'm using one and it's vaporizing one, one colony. I've got the next one already staged. And then the third one from the one I just pulled off, I fill it back up and get that ready. So it's really a pretty quick assembly line process. It takes about a minute or so for each hive, and then I move on. Another thing of note, even though I'm wearing the uh, uh, ventilator here, ventilator, respirator, uh, I still try to stay away from the, the fumes, just in case I didn't get a perfect seal or something. I'll try to see if I can find the, uh, the video series that talks about a different way to think about treating for viral mites using oxalic acid. It was Bob Binney and then two or three other beekeepers. The one doctor from, uh, uh, I think it's University of Florida or whatever, super smart guy, can't remember his name. Um, anyway, I'll try to link to, uh, I think it's over, wherever it goes. Maybe I'll just put it in the description below. So these colonies, <laughs> don't have a solid bottom board, so a lot of the oxalic acid comes out. So I'm very glad I'm wearing the respirator. Now the final step, once I'm all done treating, is just to leave these closed up for about 10 minutes. I feel like it's about a minute per colony, so this first one, I can probably start cleaning it out and opening up the entrances. But I'm really in no rush. Bees aren't flying today. I'm just gonna leave it and uh, let the oxalic acid do its thing. Kind of interesting, uh, the, uh, the Hoover hive, this first wooden one, and then the turquoise hive, both have bees that came out of that little hole and they're checking things out. They're trying to escape the, the vaporization, I think. Whew. All right, let me adjust this. All right, well, that is pretty much pretty much it. I've got all the colonies treated. I fixed my hair it's so pretty here. Let me do this faux hawk thing. My wife, that's not really a faux hawk. Yeah, well, anyway. Um, so the purple and yellow colonies over here, uh, those are flow hives, and they have um, a screened bottom board. There's a plastic insert uh, that goes underneath there that I haven't put back in, mostly because I forgot. And so a lot of the vapors actually came out through the screen bottom board. So that's something to think about if you have screen bottom boards. Um, switching those out to solid bottom boards, certainly when you're doing oxalic acid uh, vaporization. So one other thing I wanted to talk about is the uh, respirator thing. Now I've got a face shield um, because you do want to protect your eyes from the oxalic acid. And then I have uh, the proper um, filters, I don't recall. It's 3M60926. Uh, I don't remember what else they're called, but one thing I wanna go over is how to actually put these masks on. You wanna ensure you have a proper seal. Bearded fellows like me, sometimes you can have a little bit of an issue getting a good seal. Um, the bearded ladies never have problems. They're all working in the circus anyway. All right, so I got this on, right? But it's loose. If I try to cover the holes here, when I breathe in, Right? It doesn't compress onto my face. If I pull this back and I get that seal with the with the, the rubber under here, I can feel it suck in, but I can also feel some air. So I'm gonna tighten these back. Make sure these are tight. And then I cover this again. And I try to breathe in. 
And if I don't get any air coming in, I know I have a good seal all the way around. If I can get some air in, if I hear a little hissing or something, I don't have a good seal, so I need to adjust and try it again. And then to take it off, loosen these up. Just back off over your head. So it's very important, you do not want to breathe in oxalic acid uh, vapor because it will sting. It's mostly harmless, but I believe it's painful. Don't take my word for it, it may actually be harmful. Um, but uh, you definitely wear one of these. Uh, I got this one, I can link maybe to Amazon where I got it. Probably 150 bucks for this, 150 bucks for the vaporizer thing, the battery. Uh, I did an initial video with this where I think I linked everything. I'll try to link up that video over here. Or is it over there? One of these days I'll remember which side it, it shows up on. Anyway, uh, so check that out. I think I went through everything that I bought. This battery is awesome because the vapors, vaporizer that I use uh, needs 120 volt. And if you're too far away from your house, which I am with my apiary, I can't run an extension cord. So I got this battery and it's great. It's got a 120 volt outlet. Uh, just keep the battery charged up. Um, I've done all 10 colonies five or six times and still didn't need to recharge the battery, so it doesn't take up too much juice to run it. Uh, so I think it's a great, uh, great op um, option uh, if you have a lot of colonies that you're going to treat and you are nowhere near a power source. Uh, so that's enough of that. I'm not sponsored by any of these things. This is just my opinion from uh, what I've used. Uh, anyway, that's it. Uh, I just came out here today in this cold weather to treat my bees and get them ready for the spring. So, like I said, it's November 14th. I'm probably gonna do this again, maybe in December or certainly by January. And then come March, the bees will be back out again. I might do an initial treatment in March. And uh, then the fun begins. So thanks for tuning in, everyone. Uh, we appreciate you. And by we, I mean my wife and I and the 100,000 or so bees that we have in the apiary. Uh, so be well, be kind, be good, be safe. And as always, be mindful of the bees. We need them. Thanks.